that's, that's a turn up for the books. Right then, hello, who's this? Come on, guys. Let's head for the action. Strange person. And we now have the hottest BMX professional series ever as Roker Venture presents the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. It's the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular Round 2. Hello everybody and welcome to Waterford Oaks, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. I'm D. David Morton along with Tony Jordan and this is the second stop on our super circuit of the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. And Tony, let's talk about our series. We had our first stop in Miami. Let's talk about the winner from that race. Brian Patterson's leading the series, total of 80 points. We've got other, uh, seven other riders behind him. We're in Detroit for the, for the second round. We've got an excellent day here, excellent conditions. It's about 70, 72 degrees, few clouds, beautiful facility here, grass, fast track, a tough track, very competitive track. We'll see excellent racing today. Let's talk about prize money on this Pro Spectacular series. It's one of the richest purses of all time, and each race has how much for the first place finish? $2,500 for a day's work for the top A pro winner. And that comes down to about a minute's worth of racing on this type of a track. We'll be going through all of the semis and the main motos for all of the pros, and we've got the top pros in the country from the West Coast and the East Coast. We'll have a really good first-hand look at the racetrack we have here at Waterford Oaks and our first race right after this. Let's get back to the pro racers here and uh, maybe review a little bit to our first stop on the Super Circuit, which was in Miami about a month ago for the very opening of the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular. Why don't we review how those pros finished up down in Miami? After one round in the BMX Pro Spectacular, Brian Patterson from Patterson Racing leading with 80 points. Brian is setting the pace for the entire Pro Spectacular series. Scott Clark riding for Murray in second with 70 points. In third place, Greg Grubbs riding for Jag BMX with 60 points. Fourth place, Eric Roop riding for Profile. Eric turned in an excellent ride in Miami, 50 points for fourth place. In fifth place, teammate and brother of Brian Patterson, the series leader, Brent Patterson, 40 points sitting in fifth place. In sixth place, Toby Henderson riding for the Hutch team. Toby had a little bit of bad luck in Miami. He should come on strong much later in the season. In seventh place, Anthony Sewell, Murray teammate of Scott Clark, who's holding down the second position. Anthony currently in seventh place with 20 points. And bringing up the rear in Miami, Stu Thompson with 10 points riding for Redline. You can't count Stu out anywhere. He'll be back in plenty of the races to come. Some of those pros that were on the top 10 picks for both of the magazines and the pros that did well in Miami are here with me now and I'm going to get a couple of feedback from these guys on how they like the track and how they feel about their racing. First off is Eddie King. Eddie, come on over here. Eddie's with the Diamondback team. Eddie, you, tur you were a B pro for a month and then you turned as an A pro just for the BMX uh, Pro Spectacular Series. How do you feel about your decision about turning A pro for the Super Circuit? Well, I feel that when I turned to an A-Pro, I felt that I was riding, you know, I am riding with the best riders in the world right now. And, uh, you know, I feel that I'm getting a lot of experience racing with these guys. You know, they're not that squirrely at all. They're, they're really fun to ride with. They're totally competitive and a good bunch of guys right now compared to the other riders I've been racing with. Do you, do you feel like your racing is maturing to the point where you can really compete with these guys? Uh, probably hasn't matured yet. But uh, I can race with these guys, you know, I'll be good maybe in a few years right now. I still got to mature, definitely. All right, Eddie, thanks very much. Our next rider up is the guy that won the Miami race, Brian Patterson. Brian, the magazines don't favor you here at uh, Waterford, but I've seen you in practice. You seem like you're holding your own. How do you like the track here, and do you have any pressure winning the first race? Uh, the track is in good condition. Um, as for the magazines to pick, uh, they didn't pick me at the last one either, so I guess I'll just have to prove them wrong again. Uh, how about the course here, the track here at Waterford Oaks? Do you, do you like the track? Is it fast? Oh, yeah, it's, this is one of the best tracks in the country. Nice layout. They have good facilities all around. All right, well, thanks a lot, and good luck. I bet you're going to hope that you can do well today so you can stay in your number one position. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, take care. Good luck to you. After Brian Patterson stomping Stu Thompson, still the one on the back of his trunk, 
Stu, you're not that much taller than me, are you? No, he's standing down here. <laughs> Stu, how do you feel coming into Waterford Oaks in Miami? You finished eighth, which was at least in the main. You're in the money here, and you're probably trying to find your way up to the top top five if you can. What's your strategy for today? Well, I felt really good in, in uh, Miami, and I had a few bad breaks, and it went for the worst of me. This time I'll come back, clean head. That race is in the past. I got a new one here. I'll do the best I can. As long as I qualify for Kick all the main events, there, I'm in the running. Do the best I can. Stu, you're one of the oldest two. pros in the business. Do you feel like you're? Do you feel your age yet? Job, no. Not at all. Just I just keep it. I keep ahead uh -oh. of the age. Just, just work out and stay young. Show. All right. Well, that's good. You still look young and great, guy. Take care. Thanks a lot. Good luck with today's racing. We're going to be going for just a real quick break here, and we'll be coming back to a lot more racing action with these pros and the other top experts around the country. So stick around. We've got a lot of excitement still to come. Welcome back to Waterford Oaks um, BMX Park. D. David Moore along with Tony Jordan. And Tony, we're going to get into some heavy traffic here with our very first semi-main for the A-Pro category. Starting in lane number one is number one, Stu Thompson on the red line, uh, red line team, stomping Stu on the back of his pants. He has still the one. And the next lane across from him is number 85S, Steve Schobert from Pronex, Steve Schobert. In lane number three, number 67, Anthony Sewell from the Murray team. Anthony Sewell in lane number three. Lane number four, number 25, Harry Leary from the Diamondback team, the legendary Harry Leary. Next to Harry Leary, another teammate, um, number three X, Eddie King in lane number five, Eddie King. Next to Eddie King in lane number six, Tommy Brackens, who's number five, number five, Tommy Brackens on the Powerlight team. And then in the next two lanes, we have the Patterson brothers in lane number seven is Brian Patterson, and in lane number eight is Brent Patterson, number six. So that's the lineup for our first semi-main here, and the gate is up, and these pros will be ready to crank it out here in any second. There's, there's not a slow one in the bunch here, David. We've talked earlier about the track, about the gate. The whole shot here is very important. Each of these pro mains will run twice, these semi-mains. They will run twice and we will combine the points as we talked about on the transfer system to see who will go to the main event. We will the only take the top four from each division. Only the top four. The, the, gate, is down. the gate is probably Brackens a little bit of trouble up. with Brackens, but Stu Thompson on the inside is holding his number one position, matching his number one plate. He goes over the first turn, heading for the double jumps. He clears both double jumps, and it's Eddie King bringing them down his neck. Thompson, King pulling up second, Brian Patterson in third, Anthony Sewell coming up on the outside. It's still Stu Stompton, Brent Patterson, Brian Patterson now moves into third spot. Thompson into the lead still, untouched all the way through as he goes over the table. Thompson, the Patterson brothers follow, and it looks like Eddie King managed to squeak by with a fourth place finish. So a very quick semi-main here, Stu Thompson. Definitely holding well through there, maintaining his number one lane position, using it to his advantage all the way through, finishing up. A Pro, Division Two, semi number one. Let's set the gate for you. In lane number one, number 93, Bob Madrano. Lane number two, number 29, Brian Barlow. Lane number three, number eight, Scott Clark. Lane number four, number 51, Greg Grubbs, riding for Jag BMX. Number 73 in lane number 5, Pete Longkarovich. Number 15 for the Kuohara team in lane number 6 is Clint Miller. Lane number 7, number 9, Eric Roop riding for profile. And on the outside, the outside gate position, GT BMX's Greg Hill, number 3. All right, that's our lineup for division number 2 in this semi. This is their first round of this semi. Again, in the Pro Spectacular Series, each semi-main goes two rounds. We take the top four after the two-round points are combined. A face to watch in this one, obviously, Eric Roop, who did very well out of Miami. Greg Grubbs also doing well down there in the very first stop on our Super Circuit. And the gate is up, and it is about to drop. Greg Hill in lane number eight. We'll see what lane position does. It's dead even coming off the first jump. Number 73 making headway, Pete Lonkarovich. And this Lonkarovich over the first turn, followed by number nine. That's Eric, Eric Roop. Longkarovich, Roop, and Hill coming down into the bowl. Oh, a bit of an endo. A bit of an endo in the turn. Longkarovich, Roop, Madrano, Hill is trying to make a move from fourth to third. It's Longkarovich, Roop, Madrano, and Hill, the top four positions. So Greg Hill coming out, starting from the number eighth position. The rider who went down, um, Greg Hill finishing fourth. The rider that went down, number 29, Brian Barlow. Taking a bad spill in the second turn, the first hairpin berm. Bar 
the next race we don't do it. will be the second round of our pro division. It will be division number one, semi round number two, and that will be up in just a few minutes. We've got a couple intermediary, intermediary races here before we get back to the semi-pro action. Right now, though, Tony, let's talk about our first two divisions, division number one and division number two. As I said before, there is not a slow one in the bunch. We've got really the cream of the crop in here. I wouldn't want to be riding in either one of these. Stu Thompson. Stu won the first moto main in Miami, had some bad luck, went down in the second one, got a flat tire while leading the third one. He's back to show people why he's got that number one on his bike. Brent Patterson taking a second place in that first division moto. Brian Patterson, the Miami winner, taking a third. And Eddie King, BMX Action's top pick, taking a fourth in that division one semi one. Okay, let's take another look at that last race here, the division number two, which was uh, the, semi, the semi main. We've got two divisions here. This is the second division, the second race that we just saw. And we had, a, uh, we had a, a spill halfway through this race in turn number one, but we can see here at the gate, our riders in position. Greg Hill, you can see on the far lane, number eight on the far left in the bright yellow on the GT team. All of these racers up. The pedal dropped out of the hole shot. It was Pete Longkarovich. Pete Longkarovich comes from the middle of the gate there, gets an excellent start. Hill does his best on the outside, but Longkarovich really does get the hole shot. Here comes Longkarovich over the first turn, kind of a drop-off turn, and heading for the double jump. Longkarovich sets up and cleared both of them. And here in the second turn, you can see number 29 go down, Brian Barlow. Looks like he clipped the back wheel of another bike. Meanwhile, Longkarovich is wheeling away with it. Coming over into the final turn, Roop is in second. Greg Hill trying to make a move on the outside, but pulls up a little bit short, coming over the tabletop towards the end of it. So the way it finished, Pete Longkarovich, who got the whole shot over the first jump, managed to hang on. It was Eric Roop, who did exceptionally well down in Miami, finishing second. Um, Bob Mondrano was third, and Greg Hill was fourth. And those are our big figures here for the division number two first semi. Tony will have more racing action when we come back for the second round of our semis. We'll be back to division number one, the division in which Stu Thompson took first place right after this message. With us is the winner of the very first pro semi-main in division one, Stu Thompson. Stu, you had the number one lane position, and it was a very tough heat. You're man you managed to get the whole shot. We've got the race here, and I'd like, if you would, to kind of go back play-by-play play with us here as we come off the very first jump. Okay, I had the inside, and it's not a good position in this track because the track narrows down, and if anybody gets on the outside of you and gets a good start, they're going to close you off real fast. So I had to concentrate on watching the lights, getting a good start, and trying not to tangle with any riders on my outside. Now, how about this double jump coming up here? Is that an easy jump to take both? No, no it's not, because you're, you're still trying to maneuver from coming off this drop-off turn, and you don't have enough pedals to quite get in there and clear the whole thing. As you can see on that jump, I landed on the, on the back side of the jump, and I didn't quite clear the whole thing, but I took it as smooth as I could, and I didn't want to speed jump it, as we call, by pedaling over both. I just want to get over in a clean line and try not to see any riders coming up on my inside. On this wraparound turn here, do you need to keep a kind of a medium line, or do you get hung out to drive to go too high? Yeah, if you go too high in the beginning, someone will come up underneath you. What I'm trying to do is I try to hang close to these styrofoam markers mm -hmm. and then drift wide as I, as I uh, reach the apex of the turn and come out of it, I'll start to drift wide. We're dropping into the bowl here. Any, sp any special secret getting through this part? Well, there's, it's kind of flat on the inside, so you have to try to, to get away from the flat part and go into the berm. And then you just start to widen your turn and pedal up as high as you can and use the berm so you don't slide out. And you just hit this double jump. It's really bumpy, and it can throw your bike in all kinds of different ways if you don't watch which way you hit it. I just kind of skimmed over both of them, went in the inside of this corner here, and just started torquing as hard as I could go. Were you tempted to look back? Uh, not at this time, no. Do you know, did you know it was close? Uh, I knew there were riders behind me. I usually go by shadows. Uh -huh. um, if I can see a shadow on either side of me, then I know someone's pretty close. Well, you seem like you came right, off. Yeah, right there I'm looking back because I, I stick my head down all the way to my chest, and I, can, I look down beside me. Well, Stu had a little bit of bad luck in Miami. He certainly looks like he's going to make up for it here. <laughs> Stu's formula seems to be get out in front and stay there. Well, he certainly That's worked it, on yeah. that last one. That's it. Do you change your strategy any for this next one, or is it entirely up to your gate position well, again? Well, I hate to say it, but I, I've got a little, a bit of a cushion now that I've got that first place. But I still want to go out and win it and show the other guys that they've got someone to compete with. <laughs> All right. 
Thanks very much, Stu. Uh, we'll let you get back to the starting line because your race is coming up here shortly. Stu Thompson, the winner of that first semi round, number one plate, and we'll be watching him as he enters Division One for the second semi main coming up next. Atkins, Tommy having some difficulty coming out, snagging a pedal on that last one. In the, in the lane next to him is number 25, Harry Larry. In lane number uh, number five, we have number six, who is Brent Patterson. In lane number six, number one, Stu Thompson. In lane number seven, number three X, Eddie King. And in the last lane, lane number eight is number four, Brian Patterson. Well, we had a Thompson and King sandwich there for the Pattersons. Thompson winning it, King taking fourth, and the two Patterson brothers finishing second and third, Brent and Brian consecutively here. These pros are up on their pedals, and they're getting ready for this gate to drop. Again, a very tough semi. These guys are fighting to finish in the top four. They'll take their combined points of their places for these two semis to see who advances into the main. When we get to the main, we have a unique transfer system there to determine the overall winner, but these guys have to advance out of this semi, and the gate's about to drop, and it's underway. Stu Thompson trying to repeat his number one performance, and he has a nice hole shot, but number six, Brent Patterson, is fighting his way through the turn. It's number six, Brent Patterson, over the doubles, and into that first round. Eddie King, who's been a, a tremendous racer all day long, sticking his head there in second place. Brent Patterson holding the lead in first. Eddie King in second. Stu Thompson, winner of the last main, in third. And Harry Larry coming in fourth, but Harry Larry's going to fight it out with Brian Patterson. It's Larry Patterson, and Harry pours it on for an exciting finish between third and fourth place. It certainly was. Looking in the back of the pack there, I'm not at all certain that our Miami winner, Brian Patterson, has transferred to the main. He finished way down there, and I don't think combined with his third place finish in the first one, I don't think he's going to be able to transfer, but we'll have to wait and find out. Now we'll set the gate for the A-Pro Division II semi number two in lane number one. Number 29, Brian Barlow, went down in the second turn last event. In lane number two, number 15, Clint Miller from Kuahara. Lane number three is number 93M, Bob Madrano. Lane number four, Greg Grubbs, 51, riding for Jag BMX. Lane number five, number nine, Eric Roop, riding for Profile. Lane number six is eight, Scott Clark, riding for Murray. Lane number seven is 73L, Pete Longkarovich, who won the first Division II semi. And on the outside again, that doesn't even seem possible, but Greg Hill <laughs> is on the outside position again two times in a row. He didn't have great success with it the first go around. Let's see if he can do a little bit better here. Greg did finish fourth in the first semi for this division. He's on lane number eight again on the outside, and we'll see if it's a, to a disadvantage the second time around. The gate is up. The racers are ready. And we're underway here for the second semi for this division. Yes. He's just about to drop. It, do or die time for Greg Hill. He's got a good start coming out of the outside. It looks like 93, Madrano has got a good start in there. Long Karavich taking the lead again. It's Long Karavich, Hill, and Madrano. One, two, three. Clint Miller trying to pull a move up on the inside. It's still Long Karavich and Hill going at it. And Hill's got to make it this time. Number nine making a move on the inside. Eric Rube. Eric finishing well the last moto. And on the outside, Scott Clark's fighting it out. But he's not going to hold on. We'll see how tight finish between third and fourth. Greg Hill finishing second. No problem between between Longarevich, who finished first, repeating his success, and third and fourth was a toss-up, a real tight finish. We have an injury right behind us here on the starting gate. It's Believe Brian it or Barlow. not, it's number 29, Brian Barlow. Tough luck for this competitor. Second moto in a row that he's gone down. The medics are attending him right now. Right over the first jump, we talked earlier with some of the pros, this is where the big actions are going to happen. Right in this first straightaway here, they come eight across in the gate, they get over that first jump, and they're all fighting down to get into a single file position to get over that first turn, and Brian Barlow got caught in the pinch this time. We'll be back with lots more exciting race action as we go into our pro main event. Right, all the pushing and shoving has come down to this, our very first round of our, of our pro main. We have three pro mains. It's all the same main, but they run three times to determine the most consistent winner, and it's a new system devised specifically for the ESPN BMX Pro, pro Spectacular. In lane one, number six, Brent Patterson. Brent Patterson number in lane number one. Next to him in lane number two is number nine, Eric Roop. Eric Roop. Next to him in, in lane number three, it's number three, Greg Hill. In lane number four, it's number 93, Bob Medrano. 
In lane number five, we have number 25, Harry Larry from Diamondback. Lane number six, 73, Pete Lonkarovic from Lonkarovic Racing. Lane number seven, number one, Stompin' Stu Thompson. And in lane number eight, number three X, Eddie King. That's our lineup for our first round of our Pro Mains. Got a very interesting gate here for this uh, three-moto main here. Brent Patterson made it. Brian Patterson, winner of Miami, did not. Eddie King, BMX Action's top pick. A real dark horse coming in here, but they picked him to win. He's right up there. He's got as good a chance as anybody in this first Pro Main, the first of three. Racers are up. Remember the winner, the overall winner for the Pro Main, $2,500 in the Pro First, $5,000 overall. It's a dead heat over the first jump, but Greg Hill takes the lead with Stu Thompson right on his tail. Number three, Greg Hill going over that double jump, clears the boat, stopping Stu right on his tail. It's Rosa Patterson. Brent Patterson coming to number three spot right now. Greg Hill pushing out for the lead. Stu Thompson in third. Patterson having to show the match with Eddie King. Eddie King sliding into third over the corkscrew. And right now it's Hill, Thompson, King, and Patterson. And number nine is leaking up Eric Rube, but Eric Rube might have Sneaked out Patterson at the finish. So it looked like the finish for that one is Greg Hill in first, Stu Thompson, Eddie King, and Eric Roop and what a moto. It certainly was. Boy, Greg Hill, after suffering that misfortune last round in Miami going down, Greg's off to a great start here. Stu Thompson's in excellent position with a second place. He can take it very easily. Eddie King putting in a very consistent third place. Eric Roop fourth, just as he was in Miami. Brent Patterson bringing up fifth. Brent right up there up until the, the, this point. We'll have to see if Harry and uh, Pete Longkarovich and Bob Medrano can give these guys a run for their money coming up in round two. Interesting to note, I think, Tony, is that Brian Patterson, who won the Miami race, was not even in this moto. He did not make it to the mains. The, the person that second finished is Scott Clark, finishing second in Miami. He's not here, and Greg Grubbs, the other finalist in Miami, he isn't in this main either. So we got a lot of new faces, and we'll be staying around here until our next race lines up for the second round of this exciting pro main action. Very quickly, Tony, as we go down the line here, we have our pros lined up, and we'll see if we can give you your lane positions here before they take off. In, num in lane number one is number three, Greg Hill from GT Racing. Next to him, number 73, Pete Lonkarovich from Lonkarovich Racing. Next to him, in lane number three, Stu Thompson, number one. In lane number four, number six, Brent Patterson. Brent Patterson, lane number four. Lane number five, Eric Next Roop is Eric Roop profile in lane number six number 93 Bob Medrano in lane number seven Eddie King number three Eddie King 3x and in the last lane lane number eight another guy in the Diamondback team Harry Larry number 25 that rounds out our gate position here. Greg Hill trying to repeat his performance. We're already one main down. We've got two mains to go. This is the second main. These guys are battling for $2,500 first place prize money, $5,000 total for the total purse of this main. We have two mains left. This is main number two. The placings are going to be very critical. The gate is up. The riders are off, and Greg Hill is trying to bump and shove his way into the hole shot, and he manages to get over the first shot. Greg Hill repeating his race in the last one over the hill first. Patterson behind him with group number nine. It's Hill, Roop, and Patterson. And Hill, Ruben Patterson around the first hairpin. It's Hill. Eddie King has now moved into second place. It's Roop in third. Stu Thompson, of course, getting bumped by Brent Patterson. They oh! Brent and Stu are almost taking themselves out. They did take themselves out as the other two racers managed to sneak in. It's Greg Hill taking first place, followed by Eddie King, Eric Roop. And I think Lon Karavich snuck in there at fourth. We'll be right back after this with more exciting pro spectacular racing right after this break. Point standings right now after our first two mains. Greg Hill leading with two points. Eddie King in second place right now with five points. Eric Roop with seven points. And Stu Thompson with nine points. You get one point for each place that you finish. If you finish eight, you get eight points. So obviously the least amount of points is what you want. Greg Hill has an excellent chance of winning the whole bit. $2,500 first place prize money. He is in lane number one. Greg Hill in lane number one. Next to him, number one, Stu Thompson in lane number two. Stu Thompson. Next to him, number 73, Longkarovich. Pete Longkarovich, number 73. Next to him in lane number four, number three X, Eddie King. Eddie King, a young pro who's doing excellent in his second month of top pro racing. Next to Eddie, his teammate on Diamondback, number 25, Harry Larry, the legendary Larry, doing well here at Waterford Oaks. Next to him in lane number six, Number six, Brent Patterson. Brent Patterson, number six. He did well in Miami, and he's doing well here in Waterford. Number 93 is next to him, Bob Medrano, in lane number seven. And in the last lane, lane number eight, is Eric Roop. Eric Roop, who took fourth place in Miami, and he's fighting for those point standings here at Waterford Oaks for that overall series standings at the end of the year. The racers are up, and we're ready for race action here, our last main of the day. 
is our top pro money here. The guys are fighting for $5,000 total purse money. The gate is up, the racers are up, and Tony, this should be one heck of a drama here. Eddie King and Eric Rupp are going to have to pull one out of the hat to beat Greg Hill here. He's in, sitting in a great position with only two points. There's the gate. Patterson flips over the gate. Hill gets knocked out by Stu Thompson, who's got the lead going into the first turn. It's Thompson, Rupp, and Longkarovich going over the double jump. Still Thompson in the lead. Longkarovich now looks like Madrano has pulled up. Harry Leary is down. Two Thompson takes the lead. Two Thompson does take the lead all the way through Longkarovich in third. In third place, Eddie King makes a wild move and goes over the table, comes to the third place. Greg Hill's going to end up in fifth, and we're going to have to do a race wrap up a little bit later, Tony. But basically, after that first shot, Stu Thompson walked away with the win. He has a he had a good finish in the other two mains, and I'm going to go down to the finish line here and talk to our winner of that last main and watch it on replay. Tony, I'm going to be right back. Tony, the winner's circle was kind of a bevy of confusion. Stu Thompson won the moto, but the real question was who was our overall winner? And you can see our final results. It came down like this. Greg Hill, who had won two previous motos, came into that moto finishing sixth. You take his first two place finishes and add a six place finishes, he gets eight points. Eddie King came through that last moto, the last moto with a third place finish, added to his previous points of five. He also totaled eight, but the advantage goes to the racer that finishes stronger in the last moto. So young Eddie King, tied with Greg Hill with eight points, will get the victory and will get the $2,500. Finishing also through that last moto, Stu Thompson, Eric Roop, Pete Longkarvich, Bob Medrano, Brent Patterson, and Harry Larry in that order. That means that for the overall standings right now, Eric Roop has 100 points, and Eddie King is tied right now with Brian Patterson from the win of Miami with 80 points each. And Eddie, this is only your second race as an A pro competing against the biggest guys in the business. And how does it feel to come back and being a consistent winner and wrapping up with a first place win here overall? Well, right now I kind of feel kind of shocked. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight or <laughs> this weekend or nothing like that. What and were I your thoughts great. going through the race? Uh, just to be consistent and make sure Greg doesn't finish in front of me or Stewart or Eric Roop, but to be consistent. Well, you certainly were, and it paid off for you. Randy Roker's here from Roker Ventures to present Eddie King with a check for $2,500. Eddie, congratulations on your first big victory as an A-Pro, and many more to you. Thank you very much, Randy. All right, that's how the action came down here at Waterford Oaks, Michigan. I'd like to have Tony Jordan come on in. And, Tony, how would you describe this finish, kind of as a surprise? This certainly is a surprise. There's one person that did pick it, I must admit. Bob Osborne certainly did pick the winner here today. <laughs> Not, not too many people expected it to happen with the lack of experience he has in the A-Pro class, but he certainly showed them wrong. Well, Eddie King is a strong racer. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him as we continue our super circuit. That concludes the action for the second stop on the ESPN BMX Pro Spectacular Round 2 here at Waterford Oaks Park in Michigan. Bye, BMXers. See you next time.